stream sings a lullaby, there grows a lily fair. From, from the previous reading as well. This would come as a shock, I'm sure. Barry's 24 and he falls in love. And he falls in love with the most exotic animal. The young woman who in 1964 may not believe it, but it is true there were three of them, is a civil engineering student. And obviously a woman with those characteristics in 64 has some quite distinct notions of her own that may not quite gel with the time she lives in. Nevertheless, initially, the course of true love does run smooth. I mean, he gets a day off and he takes her out to a very favourite spot on, of my own on a place called Strangford Loch in the north of Ireland, a place called Grantshire Point. And I'd just like to read you a little scene from there, okay? Grantshire Point was a narrow, lonely peninsula, bent like a dog's hind leg, and stretching for three quarters of a mile into the shallow water. It would take about half an hour to get there. He concentrated on his driving and became aware of a low musical sound and glanced over. Patricia's lips were moving. And as he strained to hear, he could make out the words of a song. Rest assured, I will not sing it to you. <coughs> I couldn't carry a tune in a bucket, but you might enjoy the words. Where lagging streams sing lullaby, there blows a lily fair. The twilight gleam is in her eye, and the night is on her hair. He recognized the words of my lagging love, one of the most beautiful of all the Irish love songs, and he had no idea what a rich voice Patricia had. He felt the hair from the nape of his neck tingle as he sang on, sang on and he listened in rapture until the last night, and sings in sad, sweet undertone the song of heart's desire. That was lovely, he said. I, I didn't know he could sing like that. She smiled and said, you know I like music. God, he said, with a voice like that, you should be on the stage. She shook her head and laughed. No, I just sing for the fun. You can sing for me any time you like, he said. <coughs> the song of heart's desire, my heart's desire. He saw the turn to Grandshire was coming up ahead, turned right onto the Port of Ferry Road and drove slowly along a rutted lane. The old strings of the car complained, and the gorse bushes bordering the lane made soft scratching noises on the car's sides. He came to a broad, flat expanse of scotch grass in front of a lichened and encrusted dry stone wall and stopped the car close to a stile where a rock step abutted a vertical state stone. He knew there was a similar step on the other side. Here we are, he said. Hop out. And he climbed out. Gosh, he said, it's warm. He was starting to sweat. Hang on, he said. I'll leave my jacket in the car. He jumped it in the back seat collected a picnic basket and an old blanket and joined Patricia in the front of her vehicle. We'll have to walk from here, he said. Grand, she said, and took his hand. Let's go. As he led her to the stile, he felt the sun on his back. Bees murmured in the gorse flowers. He heard the call of a wood pigeon, a burbling oboe's note soft and low, coming from a copse on a low hill that tumbled to the shore on the far side of the bay between the point and the mainland. The grass was springing under his feet, and his step felt light as his heart. Barry knew better than to ask Patricia if she needed help getting over the stile. He remembered how on the night he'd met her, she'd bristled and told him that she didn't want pity for her lame leg. I'll go first, he said, climbing onto the step, clambering over the snake and hopping onto the grass. He put the basket and blanket down and waited for her to steady herself. Jump! he said, and when she did, he caught her, he held her, and he kissed her. He was aching to tell her he loved her, but he shied away out of fear that she might not return the scent. Nice, he said, and held her at arm's length. Very nice. He turned and pointed ahead. Do you see that collection of tumbled stones about halfway along the point shore? Yes. Well, that's where we're going. Come on. He guided her along the point, past brackish pools of peat water, the colour of stewed tea that were hidden among the red benweeds. 
He jumped when a small brace, a brace of small ducks exploded from beneath his feet, wings clattering as they strained for altitude, the leading bird making a hoarse creaking noise. Teal, said Patricia, and he remembered she was an amateur ornithologist. The drake, he's the one with the brighter plumage. He's leading. They always do. You don't object to that, I hope, he said. Barry! You see, she was laughing with him. There are lots of wildfowl down here, he said, as they crossed grass to walk along the shingly shore. I know, she said. I used to go to the wildfowl sanctuary at Port Castle Espy on the far shore of the Loch. The grey lag geese come there from Spitsbergen to winter. There used to be thousands of Brent geese. You call them Brant in this country, but they're Brent over there. But they've been shot almost to extinction. He heard the sadness in her voice. He squeezed her hand. That's a shame. Barry decided this was not the time to tell her that Dr. Fingal Flaherty or Riley was a keen wildfowler. A flock rose from the water's edge, wheeled and jinked, then it turned in unison and flew low over waves that heaped grey foam and yellow brown bladder rack into a ragged tideline. The air was redolent of salt and the scent of its sea time pleased him. Those are dominants, she said, and that's a heron. She pointed up to where Barry could see a gangly bird that must have had a pterodactyl somewhere in the family tree. The big bird flapped its wings languorously under fluff ball clouds beneath a robin's egg blue sky. He glanced over to watch the dumbbell moving like blown smoke swing over great rusty oil drums and heard the clangor as it moved with the tide hitting the shingle on the rocks. Not far now, he said. Thank you for bringing me here, she said. It's really lovely. Not everybody, not everybody is my books eccentric. Now, I'm going to take a break. Questions? And like a love sick lad am I, she has my.